עבד אל רחים, הודא אל קזעימי, ואריק סנר, וגרגור יגיע את הפרזנטציה. Thanks. So yeah, I'm going to talk about the crypto analysis of Print Cipher. It's a new kind of attack, which we call the invariant subspace attack, and I'll hope to explain why. So this is joint work with uh, Mohammed, Huda, and Eric, and we're all from DTU uh, in Denmark. So this is an outline of the talk. I'm first going to introduce, uh, briefly explain what this Print Cipher is, then explain the attack, and then also outline some um, relations that, uh, to, to other types of attack in this, in this case to um, uh, truncated differential attack. So this uh, invariant subspace attack implies a strange behavior of print cipher to some more standard attacks. And then at the end conclude. So print cipher is a lightweight um, SPN block cipher which was proposed at uh, Chess last year. <coughs> And the idea is to take advantage of a, not of a key, of a fixed key. Yeah? So the fixed is missing there. Yeah? Otherwise it's not very uh, innovative maybe. Yeah? Um, And, and um, it's also in the, in the chess paper, it was shown that it seems that the print cipher is resistant against uh, standard attacks like uh, linear, mainly linear and differential attacks. And so far there have been attacks on, attacks on reduced round versions of the cipher. So this is how print cipher, one round of print cipher 48 looks like. There are two versions, print cipher 48 and print cipher 96, but I'm going to uh, focus on print cipher 48 only in the talk. So um, it's a 48-bit block, si block size uh, block cipher with 48 rounds and an 80-bit key. And the point is that the main point is that this 80-bit key is the same in each round. So the round functions are identical, including the key, uh, up to um, a round constant. So what happens is that that uh, first the state is uh, where's this laser pointer? Ah, it's here. So first, the state is XORed with, with a 48-bit uh, XOR key. Then it's, the bits are permuted, the 48 bits are permuted according to this uh, present-like uh, permutation. And then uh, six bits are XORed with a round constant, which is different for each round, of course. And then to get some more, um, to get more than, to, to enlarge the key space to more than 48 bits, some more um, <coughs> parts of the cipher have to be key dependent. And for print cipher, what is done is that And um, before uh, three bits enter this three-bit S box, S here, each uh, three bits are permuted in a key-dependent way. And so there are, in total, six uh, permutations of three bits, but only four are allowed for a print cipher. So this is how print cipher uh, works, and this is repeated for 48 rounds. So um, in the talk, but not in the paper, I'm going to focus on a more simple version, a simplified version of the cipher, yeah, to make things more clear. So it's, uh, it's a, not a block size of 48 bit, but 24. Um, I am going to fix the permutation key to make things easier, and I'm going to modify the S-box. So it's a completely different algorithm I'm going to show you, but the point is that the, attack, the kind of the attack uh, takes over to the original. The ideas of the attack take over to the original uh, cipher. <coughs> so I, I start with explaining what this modified S-box is. So um, the modified S-box is a property that um, it has many fixed points. So S of 0, 0, 0 gets mapped to 0, 0, 0. S of 0, 0, 1 is 0, 0, 1. S of 0, 1, 0 is 0, 1, 0. And uh, S of 1, 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0. And the point is that this can be, it's, it's uh, convenient to rewrite this in the following way, saying that S of 0, 0 star, where star is uh, arbitrary, either 0, 1 gets mapped to 0, 0 star and uh, similar things for the other bit positions. And um, the important remark is that the original S-box fulfills something which is very similar to this. Okay, so this is a picture of the simplified version. 24 bits. Um, first thing is XOR with, with a 24-bit key. So then there is a permutation which is also very similar to the permutation of the original print cipher, 48, and then there is again a round constant, um, S, S in the original cipher, and then instead of these red uh, key-dependent P permutations, I now fixed uh, one permutation. 
And then you have this uh, modified S-box applied. And then you repeat this. Um, so the, how does the attack work? So the first um, observation is that we're going to, to look at these eight bits. Yeah? So I highlighted eight bits in this uh, linear part there. And the point is that those eight bits get mapped to, to, them, to the same set of eight bits uh, by, the linear, uh, by, the lin by the linear layer. So this is kind of, if you want, a linear and invariant subspace for the linear layer of the cipher. Um, so this alone is, is certainly not a problem. Uh, for most of the ciphers, I guess you would find uh, invariant subspaces for the linear part of an SP network. Um, so the main question is how does this uh, relate to, so what happens with this uh, invariant subspace uh, when, when it goes through the S-box layer? And for this, uh, we are going to fix some bits um, in the plain text, but also in, in the XOR key. And because we have to fix some, some bits in the, in the XOR key to certain values, that already implies that this, is not, this attack is not going to work for all keys, yeah? but it's going to work only for a certain fraction of keys. Yeah? I mean, these will be weak keys if you want. <coughs> so this is the simplified version again. And now I'm going to fix these eight bits to zero in the plain text. And I'm also going to fix the same eight bits, the same position uh, to zero in the XOR key. And what this implies, of course, is that I have those zeros as the, at the inputs to the S-box. And then for the, all the other by, by bits, I don't really care, so they can be anything in the plain text, and they can also be anything in the, in the, in the key. Um, and then I get a look at what happens to these. The, the important remark here is that um, when it comes to XORing the round constant, um, here I have only stars. Yeah? I have only values which I don't really care about. Yeah? And this is not changed by XORing the round constant. So I have this is the state uh, before the S-box layer, and now recalling uh, the special property of this modified S-box, saying that 0, 0 star gets mapped to 0, 0 star, uh, and, uh, and so on, means that I can, with probability 1, so, so far everything happens um, with probability 1, I get this uh, at the end of uh, one round. Yeah, so I start by a plain text where I fix some bits, and then after one round, I have again some bits fixed to zero. And the main point then is that those things are actually the same. And because they are the same and the round keys are all the same, um, this property iterates over any number of rounds, basically. So um, this means if certain key bits are zero, there's, and, and I fix certain bits in the, in the plain text to zero, then I get also zero bits in the cipher text. <coughs> so the, the as I said, the, the round constants do not really help um, because they, they don't, uh, no, no, bit is, no bit is fixed where the round constants are XORed, and it works for the whole cipher. And something very similar uh, happens for print cipher um, 48. Um, so here is actually the, pro the, the kind of similar property that holds for the original S-box. Um, so instead of having all, all things fixed to zero, one has to fix uh, some bits to zero, some bits to one, and in the plain text, and also some bits to zero and some bits to one in the, in the, in the XOR key, but more or less the same thing happens. Yeah? You again get a one round iterative uh, property for these weak keys with probability one. Um, yes, so it's a probability one distinguisher for the whole cipher for the weak keys. Uh, around two to the 50, I think it's actually two to the 51, of 2 to the 52, but uh, yeah, might be a bit wrong, but around this. 2 to the 50 out of these 2 to the 80 keys are weak, and something similar happens for print cipher 96. And so to, to give a bit of an abstraction of this attack, what happens is that you have a round function where you can identify a subspace u and a constant d, so that this uh, round function maps this subspace or this, this, this coset of the subspace to a coset, to a different coset of the same subspace. And then if the key is such that this, that it's, it's in, the, in a certain uh, coset again, then it follows that the round function, including a, a final XOR in this notation here, uh, maps uh, a coset of a certain subspace to itself. And this is exactly what happens 
uh, for print cipher 48. And this is where the name comes from. Yeah? It's an invariant subspace. Um, so next thing I would like to talk about is a relation to truncated differential attack. Actually, again, to simplify things, I'm not going to talk about uh, truncated differentials, but only classical uh, differential characteristics. So um, what we normally see is when we talk about the probabilities of, of uh, characteristics is that if I have an R-round differential characteristic, now it's a one-round iterative thing, so I have a different alpha going to a different alpha and so on, uh, with probability P for one round, then one can show that if you assume independent round keys, that the average probability taken the average of all keys is P to the R. So the probabilities multiply along these characteristics. And also what, what one often uh, assumes is that all keys behave similarly. So for a fixed key, you also get a probability which is very close to P to the R. And as it turns out, this is, uh, a print cipher behaves very differently in this, in this respect for some differences, for some differential characteristics. So um, to, to uh, explain this a bit uh, easier, to make things even more easy, I, I'm going to consider only a two-round characteristic here. So I have a difference alpha, and uh, uh, that should go to a difference alpha, and it should go to a different alpha. And I have a round function. I also ignore the whitening keys if you want. So I have a round function alpha, uh, R that I apply. I'm going to XOR a key in the middle and then apply the same round function again. And then this set A, you can think of this set A as the set of all good pairs. Yeah? Of all good pairs, fulfilling the, the one round characteristic alpha goes to alpha. So if you want to, to know, if you want to compute the probability for this two round characteristic, what has to happen is that uh, if you have a good pair here, you apply the round function to the good pair and it has and XOR the key, and then this has to be again a good pair. Yeah? So that means the probability for this two round characteristic is the size of the set R, uh, uh, um, A, uh, round function applied to R, A, sorry, the round function applied to A, XORing the key, and, and then the, um, the intersection with the set A itself. And then you have to scale by two to the n. So this is the probability for a two round. Um, two-round uh, characteristic for the given key k. <coughs> so in the picture, this means that you have to look at the intersection of the set A with the set R of A plus k. And for different, for different uh, keys, this intersection can, can look differently. Yeah. So what happens uh, now for print cipher is that um, you can define the difference alpha so that the, the set of good pairs is actually the set which is invariant under the round function. So that means that um, if, if so, that A is actually in a fine subspace, U plus D, and that if you apply the round function to this set, you get uh, U plus C, so a coset of the same subspace. And then if you look at uh, this formula for computing the probability for the two-round characteristic, you get that you have to intersect this uh, coset of the sub subspace U with this coset, the subspace U. And now this is, uh, is different because if you have two uh, cosets of the same subspace, there are only two possibilities how they intersect. So either the intersection is, is empty, so they, don't, they are disjoint, or they are the same. Yeah? And this means that it kind of already indicates that something strange can happen here. So, uh, and actually you can show that there exists an R-round differential characteristic such that the probability is either two to the minus 16 for any number of rounds or zero. So uh, depending on if the key is weak or not, you either get uh, probability 2 to the minus 16 if the key is weak, or probability 0 if the key is not weak. So this is uh, coming back to what I started with in this uh, section. So here probabilities do not multiply, so it's independent of the number of rounds, and they are very key dependent. So depending on the key, the probability is very different. <coughs> so to conclude, um, so this invariant subspace attack is, uh, it identifies weak keys for the full uh, print cipher 48 and print cipher 96. I didn't talk about this, but it's in the paper. And I also mentioned this strange behavior for um, some differential, actually truncated uh, characteristics. And there's in the paper, but I don't have time to talk about this, um, there's a similar observation for linear attacks. 
um, where also again for instance, uh, some, some linear um, approximations be, don't behave as you would expect them to behave. So uh, future work is uh, to generalize the attack. Um, you all, one, one also, another open problem is that so far this is uh, only uh, distinguishing. Yeah? So if you, have, if, you fix, if you have a weak key, you can easily uh, identify that you have one of those two to the 50 uh, something keys. But finding the, 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 the correct one out of these two to the 50 is uh, still not, uh, we still don't know how to do this. And uh, another thing which I think is interesting to explain, this, um, this, behavior, this strange behavior of the linear text directly. I think this uh, would, be, would be nice to be able to do this. And that's uh, all I had to say. Thanks. <laughs> We have plenty of time for questions. Any questions? To, um. Yeah. The paper of, of whom? No, I didn't. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll have a look. Thanks. Um, I will ask you a question. Did yeah. you look at any other lightweight encryption schemes looking for similar uh, properties? Yes, we were looking for similar things, but um, I mean, this property that this S box has, yeah? This thing. Where is it? No, I'm too far, no? This one? This. It's unlikely to happen for, for larger S-boxes. Yeah? So it's really um, the point that for 3-bit S-boxes, strange things might happen. Um, I mean, we looked at present a bit um, as a natural similar thing, but there we couldn't find something. And also, I mean, one, one thing which you kind of need is, or would be nice for the attack at least, is to have constant round keys. Yeah? So because then if you, if you yeah, then it iterates. So we looked at Nokian as an example, but we, we tried kind of basic uh, things. Yeah? But uh, so we cannot say that it doesn't apply, but we were not able to apply the attack. OK. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.